so I know it's a bit of a mess, but this is my home toolbox. Um, it used to be one I kept in the shop up until I worked at Andy Moore Ford as an electrical tech. Then I downsized to a cart. And then from there, that set kind of grew, and that's the set that keeps on my service truck. But it's a Mac Tools MB1300 Maximizer. The top box is a snap-on, and then that's just a Harbor Freight Locker. And the majority of my tools that I use every day are in one of these three boxes. Uh, I do have a tool cart over there that's my auto body stuff, and then I have my first toolbox. It's an old Craftsman one, but that's pretty much all spare parts, nuts and bolts, and woodworking tools. So not stuff I get into very often. I do have some stuff over on the shelf. We'll probably cover that stuff, and then we'll go through what I keep in here. And like I said, it's a mess. There's not much I can do about it. We have really limited space in the garage at my house to fit a lot of stuff in. So this is kind of what I'm stuck with for now until we can get some better organization going. So it's pretty rare that we ever see this top box open. Uh, there are a lot of specialty tools in here, a lot of stuff that I almost never use. So we'll start at the bottom door and work our way up. As you can tell, this drawer is never open. There's always stuff in front of it. So I've got punch sets over here for marking stuff when I'm doing assemblies. Uh, I don't know why these are in here. Those actually shouldn't be in there. Anyway. Uh, Snap-on flywheel turner, and then all of these are like wrench screwdriver combinations for setting valves up. So when I adjust valves, and then I've got the T-handled Allen wrench as well. That's all in that drawer. I don't get into those very often at all. Uh, this drawer, miscellaneous taps and dies. The extra stuff that sits out of your set are all in here. Uh, my carbide burrs, my mini files, bigger files. For some reason, a set of chisels. I really can't explain why those are in my auto, like automotive box, but somehow they ended up living here. Next drawer up is precision measuring. So a couple different sets of feeler gauges, a tape measure, a uh, regular angle finder, uh, caliper for doing brake rotors. These are my T-gauges, one of my micrometers, I'm trying to do this one-handed, and I'll put it upside down. Uh, pretty nice Mitsutoyo um, dial caliper. This was actually my great-grandfather's, and it's probably the most accurate one in my toolbox. I keep a cheap digital caliper like this on top of my toolbox for quickly doing stuff, but when I need to do stuff nice, that's the one I come grab. Over here then, another smaller micrometer, and then my bigger, cheaper micrometer set. Uh, this is all just scrapers and razor blades, AN wrenches, and uh, the suction cup for valve lapping. I don't use it very often, but it's nice to have when I do need it. Uh, these are all carburetor tools, so this is everything to tune an Edelbrock. Other specialty tools for working on carbs. Uh, an O-ring set. And then I made this a while back. So it's a snap-on handle that I put a deeper in tool into. Uh, miscellaneous, I've got spare handles for like snap-on uh, ratchets, these are for pliers. My other deburring tool is in here. There's a soapstone. Just kind of some miscellaneous stuff. And then this drawer's got roll pins, crush washers, the little clips that you always lose when you take tank windows off, tire tread depth gauge, uh, spark plug gapping tool. There's an awl in the back. Then up top, Let's see what we got here. So this is a GM Rochester adjustable carburetor base to rebuild carburetors on. I've got a plate here with the D-ring that is drilled out to uh, work as a lifting plate. You can put it over an intake when you take a four barrel carb off, take an engine out. Valve spring tools up here. Uh, this is a piston ring land cleaner, 
uh, my mag base, oil pump priming tool, some of my homes are up here. Um, why am I blanking on this? Blue finish for uh, like guns and stuff. Probably blue, super blue. So I've used those on a few rifles I've restored before. But that's kind of this top box. I'm almost never in it. It's usually down and I pretty much always have stuff on top of it. But as you can see, there's not much in here that you need on a regular basis. So that one pretty much stays on its own. Starting with the top drawer here. It is a disorganized mess. I really have way too many tools in this box for the size of it. But we can kind of go through it. So over here, this is deep and shallow metric quarter inch drive snap-on. These are snap-on, they're not snap-on, they are Matco ADV impact wobbles. I've got some palm ratchets, some Matcos, snap-ons. I have a, a bunch of quarter inch drive stuff. These are metric shallow magnetic sockets. A Detroit diesel stamp, actually just sits in the corner of my box. Uh, these are metric semi-deeps. I just have a tire pressure gauge and that's the key to my locker. SAE semi-deeps. These are SAE sockets. They come in the kit with the ratchet and everything, but I mean, all through over here, all my long, extra long, my flex heads, and then somehow my temp gauge ended up in here for AC, but all quarter inch drive over here. I don't have deep SAE quarter. I have them in my road box, but I find that semi-deep works most of the time, and I just never had the space and never bothered putting them in my home box. Uh, Half-inch drive ratchets. So, standard length flex head, standard length ratchet, so extensions. This is an 18-inch flex head. Underneath of it, we have the 24-inch flex head and a breaker bar. And that's all I keep in this box for half-inch drive. Honestly, most of the time, it's just one of these two that I use. Um, there's a torque stick there too. Coming over here, these are the extra shallow ratchet and socket sets for 3H drive. These are impact rated uh, Allen sockets. These are just a cheap beater set of Allen sockets I keep around. Loose, this is a 12.12 millimeter for drive lines. All right here are 3H drive ratchets and extensions. So again, from like extra long flex head, extra long regular long flex heads. If I have it in a flex head, I have it a standard FF80, standard 3.8, quarter inch drive with a 3.8 head in it, the stubby ones. Um, down the rail here in the center is just odd stuff, so like 17 millimeter impact. Um, I use this because this is the size for the drain and fill plug on the trans on my truck. For the new Venture 3500, it also does VW Audi uh, axles. I want to say this one is for flywheel bolts on a Mercedes. Uh, inverted Torx Plus 24. No, that's an inverted Torx Plus 24. Uh, for Ford truck beds, newer ones. Half 3 8 impact swivel. Another 3 8 impact swivel. Quarter impact swivel. We've got a regular quarter swivel on here. Drag link socket. Adapters. Spark plug socket. These are flip sockets for uh, swollen lug nuts. Just... A bunch of stuff like that. Uh, SAE impact shallow, SAE impact or SAE shallow sockets. These are my deep well SAE. These two are snap on the impact sets. Craftsman, uh, Matco ADV shallow, metric 3H drive impact swivels. Snap on uh, deep well 3H drive metrics. There's the shallow 3H drive impact snap ons. This is. GP semi deep metric 3.8 flex heads. Uh, these two sets are GP 12 point semi deeps, metric and SAE. Uh, uses a lot when I'm building engines and stuff. I also have to use 12 point, I use those. Uh, back here are triple squares, a shallow set of them. Uh, through the middle here, just a bunch of miscellaneous sockets. Like I said, I've ran out of room in this box years ago, so stuff just kind of gets thrown in here and knocked around. I've got thread chasers for spark plugs and O2 sensors, miscellaneous uh, swivel sockets here. Over here are the bigger sets for my 3H drive metric deep well. 
my set goes all the way up to 26 millimeter. So I cut this rail off at 19. From 19, I pick it up over here. The, I think it's 21, no, 22. I broke that one. They don't make it in chrome anymore, so it's an impact one now. But that's how most of the middle of this is just laid out. Just miscellaneous stuff I don't get to all that often. Coming back forward, I've got stubby uh, metric Allen sockets, and then my stubby torques usually sit about here. Uh, Snap-on 3H drive metric and SAE semi-deeps. These are my SAE flex heads. As you can see, I don't use those very much. They like to fall out, though, so I put a piece of gaff tape over them. Uh, coming over here, there's going to be a bunch of different bit sockets. So these are more torque. They're four-sided bits. Uh, seat belts is what I've ran into them with. Tap sockets. Detroit fuel line sockets over here. Um, inverted torques. Deep well inverted torques. Inverted torques plus. Torx plus. Triple squares. Uh, most of this stuff is all off-brand stuff that I've done so far. My safety Torx Plus are off-brand. These are snap-on uh, Torx sockets, and then down here all the safety ones are Escos. These are snap-on deep torque or long Torx. And then these are standard and long Allen sockets. And those are all Cornwell. They're supposed to stand up. They don't. SAE half inch drive from 3 8 to inch and a quarter is snap on. And then 10 to 27 snap on half inch drive metrics. Uh, the 11 is skipped in the deep ball set, so that is a uh, Matco ADV. And then the four bigger sizes here are. These are all my bigger half inch drive impact sockets, so I go up to inch and a half and half inch drive and 36 millimeter. Then I've got my bud socket for wheels. There's a deep well set of 12 point half inch drive over here. I can't remember if these are metric or SAE. They're SAE, so the shallow set of half inch drive ones are metric then. Um, I've got flex head inverted torques over here, flex head torques. I don't use those very often, so they sit over here. Uh, four wheel drive axle nut sockets an extra deep inch and an eighth for doing IPR valves on seven threes, my caging nut socket, uh, the ball joint sockets for doing dodges. Down here, I have a full set of five inch, five eighths drive snap-on. So if you sit them next to a half here, you can see they are bigger. This is five eighths drive snap-on. These are from, I wanna say the late thirties to early forties. I ended up getting a full set off eBay. Then I looked out and actually found an adapter to drive them off a half inch ratchet. Uh, pieces for my lockout kit, some three-quarter extensions, three-quarter breaker bar, my longer extensions are in here, my locking one for doing transmissions. This pipe has a nut welded to it. I use that to adjust nine and a quarter diffs when I build Chrysler axles. Um, there's a long three-quarter breaker bar up here. I think that pretty well covers all the stuff I keep in the top. Oh, this one will get you guys. I'm guessing almost none of you have ever seen this before. So if you look at a torque set, when you go from a T30 to a T40, I've never seen a set that has these. Let's not say it on the socket. Now you can kind of see it. This is a T35. It's a specialty tool for Toyota. There. I had to have because I'm OCD. But that pretty much covers the main part of my top drawer, my sockets. Over here is my pliers drawer. Two of my sets of snap ring pliers are out, the flat faced ones like these. I've got them in my truck because I used them on a service call yesterday. Some of my vice grips, you have long pliers, long vice grips, big channel locks. The Nipex plier wrenches, Cobras are down here, snap on regulars, needle nose, cutters. I've got long cutters in here, those are max, tin snips. Uh, some beater uh, channel locks. Just pretty much the basic pliers and the stuff that'll fit in this drawer. This one gets stuck a lot and it's hard to open because stuff hits. Going down from there is my electrical drawer. It's a mess. I've got a fluke meter, um, 
It's a 233, which the cool thing about these is the display comes off. So if this is on, I can leave this display where I'm at, and I can have this hooked up and probed in like an engine compartment on a unit. Um, I don't always keep this one on my service truck, but I take it with when I need to. My probe set, I've got a cheap Craftsman meter, and I have no idea where I've got this one, but I've had it for years. My auto strippers, wire strippers, a power probe soldering iron, relay jumper kit, fuse jumper kit. Oh, this one's pretty cool. So I used to be a Ford Tech. This is the Master Ford Terminal Kit. So if you look at these, it's male and female pins for every size connector you'll find in a Ford. So you can back probe and not damage connectors. But I've got terminal disassembly tools. Uh, I've got a test light there. I've got the digital readout snap on one in here somewhere. But all my stuff for soldering, stuff like that. Another drawer that just always ends up being a mess. Going down from there, we've got hammers, punches, stuff like that. I have a full set of the Mac anti-vibes. I've got Mac anti-vibe sledge down here. Uh, snap on a Mac dead blow. My piston hammer is a Mac. I've got my mini sledge. My beater old Mac. Uh, ball peen dead blow. A couple different sets of punches and chisels. And this box is all just miscellaneous, kind of worn out ones. Or, you know, partial sets that have broken over years. In my bottom drawer, it's a mess. I've tried organizing this and it never lasts. I've got emery cloth, battery terminal kit, uh, my filter cutter for oil filters, pliers for taking parking brake cables off when you pull cabs. Battery tester, this is the little Mac one. I've got a load tester in here too. Spare charger for my DeWalt. Hood prop. There are some spray compressors down here. I've got the tool for taking off the lock rings on gas caps, or not gas caps, the fuel pumps on tanks. Timing light. Uh, old school battery load tester. The pliers for getting exhaust donuts off. A set of nut drivers that I pretty much never use. There it is. This is what I was looking for. Oh, two tools I was looking for. I forgot this was in here. This is the tool you need to time a 4.7 Dodge. So that's in my white truck. So this goes over the center gear. So you can put all three timing chains in sync. Anyone my age has got one of these though. This is a working dwell tack for setting up points. So that's kind of some of the stuff that's in my bottom drawer. Just a bunch of miscellaneous stuff. And then underneath, three quarter torque wrench, and this is my half inch torque wrench out of my service truck. I just store it there when I'm not using it. Let's go down this side of the box. This is my screwdriver drawer. Oh, my host picks got stuck. So over here, these are the radiator hose picks, the Snap-on Professionals, and then the Torx screwdrivers. I made this one. This is a piercing tool to put wires through grommets. I just put it on a Snap-on handle. 3 8 socket, or not socket, but a screwdriver. Actually, it's got uh, heat shrink on it. I use these when I'm doing large electrical stuff. I used to work at a place where I did some work on high voltage pumps. And that's the size for the uh, lugs on the terminals. Um, so over here at Torx, I've got my nylon pry tools for interior. I've got the set of Matco uh, trim tools, random pry bar, my cabinet screwdrivers, uh, some posi drive, my long uh, picks, mini ones. I've got, where's the other one at? Oh, it's right here. Uh, my radiator hose picks. I've got a full set of the black snap-on pry bars, my Craftsman beater pry bar. These are standard length shanks and stubby handles. These are actually my most used screwdrivers. Uh, two ratcheting screwdrivers and then a quarter inch drive stubby ratcheting. These are my pocket ones. I've got two flatheads and a Phillips. I've had this one for 
almost 10 years. I've hammered on it a little bit, but it's still going. And there's the Schrader valve tool that matches. I've got some spare shanks for my screwdrivers. Um, these are my minis, so screwdrivers, torques, and then I have two sets of the picks. Full set of the Snap-on Instinct screwdrivers. Uh, the scraper that I keep around, I use this one for like popping off diff covers and transmission pans. Uh, some mini precisions for torques and stuff like that. I use those a lot on like electronics and stuff. And then back here is just a cheap set of security bits when you need to work on stuff with that. And then my indexable pry bar lives here. I use those for pulling injectors on Detroit's. Oh. And then these, these are JIS drive screwdrivers, so not Phillips. Um, I've done some work on some old motorcycles where you need those. Another one of the drawers that doesn't like to open. Let's see how bad this one looks. This is my first wrench drawer of my two. Over there are my bigger gear wrench ratchetings that carry the sets on. So I go up to 27 on metric. And my SAE set goes to one inch. So there's the regular set. The 10 is a flex head because I lost it. The SAE set. Over here, our Mac knuckle saber, long SAEs, and then Craftsman's behind it. Those are my bigger wrenches. I go up to inch and a half and 32 millimeter with those. And down here, I have Matco's from quarter to 15 sixteenths. And then the metric set goes up to 19 from six. Ignition wrenches, these are ratcheting inverted torques. Um, these are the long flex head box end wrenches. These are Torx drivers. Um, those are Allen's. I forgot I had those in here. I've got an extra thin wrench over here that I use for bulkhead fittings. And this wrench is heated up and bent so you can grab the front cab bolts on a Ford Super Duty when you spin the cage nut. So, this is just standard wrenches, stuff you grab for all the time. Next drawer down is another wrench drawer. So, I've got more wrenches in here. I go up to inch and 7 16 some of my bigger metrics. My uh, O2 sensor wrench, the stubby one, is out getting warranty right now. Stubby ratcheting metric and SAE, line wrenches, SAE, metric. Metric uh, crow's foot S or line wrenches, and those are the SAEs. Uh, oh, no, it's not out. Not getting warranty. This is it. I forgot I already got it back. Uh, some of my adjustable wrenches. These are the metric and SAE set of the double box gear wrenches. Some fan clutch wrenches. Um, this set is. S and C shaped wrenches. The top set here is metric. Below it, I have the SAE set. And then I have a set of Mac uh, metric Long Allen T handles. My distributor wrenches sit against the front. This drawer is a bunch of miscellaneous specialty tools right now. My Pitman arm puller is out of it. I broke it on a Jeep the other day, so I need to get that warrantied. Injector timing pin for Detroit. Some fuel line disconnects, impact driver, my remote starter, harmonic balancer puller, <coughs> my mirrors, my magnets, uh, CD boot clamp tool, spare scan tool. These are all my pressure testers for uh, fuel, oil, hydraulic trans. A bunch of different stuff like that. Uh, I got a set of Mac Kiwi pliers up here. Those are another set of extractors. This is the resetting tool when you work on like European vehicles for like uh, uh, oil change lights and service lights. Random easy outs, spare locking lug nut keys I've had laying around. Below those is a set of Mac speed drive T handles. Uh, back here I've got my radio removal tools, long drill bits, my hook tools for doing alignments, one of my sets of them. Pickle forks are down here, 
Uh, this is a tool for getting forward spark plugs out. I've got the studs, so when you're doing uh, like BMWs and Mercedes that don't have lug studs, they're in here. Just a bunch of random stuff like that. My seal pullers are over here. A bunch of miscellaneous stuff in that drawer. This drawer, or into some of my air tools. So three quarter drive shallow sockets are in here. A few of the deep ones. My three quarter drive Cornwall ratchet. Uh, 33 for semi lug nuts. It's pinned and stuck on an extension. The three quarter drive. I've got my two right angle uh, air grinders. This one's got a roll lock disc on it. My quarter inch air ratchet. Uh, Ingersoll Rand air hammer. <coughs> my three eighths air ratchet. It's right here. Siphon gun for cleaning. Cut off wheel. MG325 impact, it's a 3 8 drive. I am 6100 half, blow gun, uh, piston ring compressor. My I am, or not I am, my MG725 half. It's on top of my box. I leave that one out. This one's a C8, or CDI 3 8 torque wrench. A half inch drive CDI torque wrench. CDI, both of these. It says a Snap-on company on there. That's who makes the click type ones for Snap-on. If you want to get a decent torque wrench and don't want to pay the price, the CDIs are pretty nice. And this is my inner tie rod tool. Then right here, I have my clutch, one of my clutch spring compressors for doing automatic transmissions. And that pretty much covers anything worth noting in this drawer. Down to my bottom drawer. Bearing. Uh, packing tools in there, a bunch of my hub sockets. I keep some high gauge wire when I need to make battery cables, like grounds and stuff. My big snap ring pliers, two pairs of these long vice grips. Um, this is my slide hammer set. Just some miscellaneous bigger tools down here, more three quarter inch drive extensions. Sorry, I'm trying to get this to go back down. It doesn't work one handed. Slide the tray back. Uh, straight edge for when I'm checking motors before I send them to the machine shop. Cam bearing installer, and then some more aluminum round stock I have. I make drifts and stuff out of them. And then right here is a kingpin. Uh, I want to say I got that off of Peterbilt 379. Put that in a lathe and turned it down a few thousands so I can use this as a drift to punch kingpins out when I'm replacing them so I don't have to fight them. But that's pretty much what I keep in the bottom box. Let me get the key out, we'll get the locker opened up over here, and we'll go through what I keep in the locker. So here's the inside of the locker. We'll start at the bottom, work way up because the bottom's cleaner. So down here, I've got my metric and SAE brake flaring kits for lines. Uh, disconnect set for lines, another more disconnect tools. 3 8 inch pound torque wrench ended up down here somehow. I've got all my tools for adjusting brakes in here for big trucks, caliper compressor, wine bender, tools for doing drum brakes, a C clamp that I welded a 3 8 socket to for compressing calipers. Just all that stuff's down here. Next one up is oil filter uh, wrenches, strap wrenches, claws. These are the six point double sided snap ons for drain plugs. Kind of my oil service drawer. And then the screw on tool that you can put on a hood strut when they're worn out. All right, getting into the cases here. The Great caliper wind back set for the twist calipers. It's the Cornwall set. Gear wrench sensor socket set. Just the really cheap Harbor Freight diesel compression tester set. But the nice thing about this set is has the tool to do 
the two stroke Detroits. Um, this is an OTC Stinger set of uh, bushing drivers. Just a no name ball joint press. This thing is worth its weight in gold with ball joints and joints. These are the adapters for my slide hammers to pull bearings and races, like axle bearings and stuff. This is the air hammer set of fan clutch tools. Uh, I want to say these are like bearing splitters. Yeah. So when you have like bearing races that are pressed on, or bearings that are pressed on um, like carriers or axle shafts, these um, squeeze behind them and you can pull them off. And this is my master set of snap ring pliers, the pin style. The lid likes to fall off, but it's the master set of those. And that's pretty much it for the bottom sure, or the bottom shelf. Let me get this stuff back and we'll go through the top. All right, I already got a bit of a head start pulling some of these out. So this I just got. It is the uh, timing tool for setting up Detroit injectors. An awesome subscriber sent that. This is my vacuum gun set. Most of the time I use this for vacuum brake bleeding, but I also just used it on a truck the other day to prime a fuel system. Uh, my Mac battery charger. This came with that battery tester in my bottom drawer. It's not bad, but it's only a 20 amp charger, so it takes a while. This is a tool made from aluminum sheet stock to take center caps off BMWs. The ratcheting uh, serpentine belt tool. Got this for doing 6 4 power strokes. Serpentine belts on those suck. Just cool and bleed funnel. These are the rest of my hook wrenches for doing alignments. This is my bolt grip puller set. Uh, it is a snap-on set, but I've upgraded most of the hardware to grade 8 where I can, or 8.8 on the metric or higher. That one needs to get replaced. Stud extractors. These are my thread chasers from Cornwell. Um, I have also used the Matco set. They're pretty much identical. Uh, whoever makes these makes them for them as well. Uh, this is the Sapon cooling system pressure tester. And over here, this is my master oil filter wrench set. This is my cylinder leak down kit. Another one of my clutch spring compressors. This is my Noid light set, and then my master power probe kit, and then red thread uh, locker. This is international compound number two. Uh, Transgu, I used to assemble assembly lube for engines. And then I hide my carbon choke cleaner in here because I only really use that on carburetors. But that pretty much covers it. That's everything I keep in the locker. And on the side, I've got like my thread gauges hanging. On the other side, I've got my blow gun on a tire pressure gauge but that's pretty much it for we keeping this box so excuse the mess with this one this is uh, all of my auto body and metal working tools so I've got a buffer snap on air DA line sander there's an electric DA back here randomly through here there's some of my vice grips for welding welding magnets stuff like that Uh, full set of tin snips, uh, my mini belt sander, my Clico pliers, needle scaler, my MIG pliers, 
most of my Clecos, chipping hammer. This drawer is all my soft sanding blocks, or most of them. Some of them are up actually in the top of the box. Other than my air body saw over here and my digital angle finder, these are pretty much all just pliers for welding. This drawer is a little messed up. Down here, hammer and dollies, a decent set of drill bits, my mini DA sander. I mean, it's a mess, but I don't do a lot of auto body work. I think the last thing we do this was paint the Corvette. So stuff kind of gets just thrown in it. If I had more space, I'd like to make room to hang all my buffers off the side of it and kind of get it organized more. But uh, we're pretty pressed for space in this garage, so this is what it ends up looking like. The other day, someone also commented about this in one of my videos. This is my abrasive rack. So they're just pins that are welded to a piece of plate that I bolted some angle to to hold it off my toolbox and then I staggered them so grinding discs cut off wheels uh, these are what the hell grid are these hmm oh they're 60 grit okay so those are 60s and then these are gonna be 40s or less so Fine abrasive, coarse abrasive, and then I've got some of my bigger ones stacked over here, and then the regular ones down there. But just a rack to hold them all so they're organized, you're not digging through a drawer for them.